All right, so the first step in making a sound is getting a basic tone. This basic tone is called a waveform, and it's set in your oscillator section, which you can see right here. So let's listen as I sweep through the different tones that we have on my synth here. This is triangle. That's a saw. That's a square. And as we move up towards the end here, so here it's kind of like a square, but a thinner sounding square. And that's called a pulse. Now, most synths will have at least two of these uh, waveforms or tones. And by combining them, you can create a richer, more interesting sound than just the basic tone on its own. So I'm going to load up my second oscillator here. And I'm just going to press this button to bring the volume of that second waveform up. So you can hear as I move the volume up of that second oscillator how much thicker it sounds. So how we kind of achieve that thicker sound is by changing the type of tone and the tuning of the second oscillator. Uh, it's very interesting because it'll create a lot more complexity and variation into your sound. So one way we're going to do this is just start both oscillators in the same tuning position. I'm going to increase the tune of the second oscillator and you'll be able to hear the two waveforms slightly going out of phase with each other. So uh, yeah, we just have our second oscillator's tuning selected here and as you can see it's just set to zero which is the very top. So I'm just going to start turning it. So the more you increase that tune amount, the more broken or detuned it will sound. Which, as I said, can lead to some more interesting and uh, varied sounds. So another way of tuning the other oscillator is to tune it in a musical way. So if you tune it in intervals of, say, fourths or fifths or sevenths, you can create kind of a one-note musical chord with it. So I'm just going to show you an example of that now. You can hear there, that's like a fourth. There we have about a fifth. And that would be a seventh chord. Without anything set, your notes will be sounding at full volume every time you hit a key. Envelopes let you change things like the volume of the sound over a short amount of time. So first, let's focus on the volume envelope, which is over here. An envelope is kind of like an automatic way to move a knob on your synth every time you hit a key. So say for example, without one, I might want to have my sound fade in like a string instrument every time I hit a key. I'll do that right now physically with the volume knob here so you can see me doing it. So, you can see how I was moving the knob physically to change the sound. An envelope can do this automatically for you. So here I'm going to select and turn up the attack on the envelope. Now the attack is like a fade in. You can see as I turn up the attack, 
the sound gradually fades in more and more each time I press a note. Now, similar to the attack, we have the decay, which is basically the opposite. Decay will either fade your sound out over time or give you a sharp burst at the start of your sound. There is one thing to keep in mind, and that is the sustain, which will affect how much your sound fades out as opposed to how long it fades out. Now, sustain is the level of volume the sound will stay at after it's gone up and down from the attack and decay. If you have it set at zero, your sound will completely fade out like it is right now. If you set it to the maximum, you will basically cut out the decay fade out entirely. So let's select our sustain here. You can see we have it at zero. And you can see there I've turned it to the max and it's basically cutting out the decay fade entirely. So lastly, if you set it somewhere in between uh, zero and max, it will give you a bit of pluck to the start of your sound from a decay while still maintaining a bit of consistency. So you can hear there uh, the decay, which is kind of giving that bit of pluck, and then it stays at the sustain volume level. So the last part of the envelope is the release. Release is much like decay in that it fades out the sound, but the thing is that it only works when you let go of a key as opposed to everything else, which only works while you're holding the key. Now, a filter will take your basic tones and alter them by removing frequencies from it. It's kind of hard to visualize, so instead I'll show you what it sounds like. So here's the basic tone. Now I'll move the filter cutoff right here. It's kind of like hearing music playing in the room next to you. It it removes the treble or high end from the sound as you move it down. Beside that, you also have resonance, which adds a sort of sharpness to the sound. Here's what it sounds like. So as you can see, the higher the resonance, the sharper the sound when you move the filter cutoff knob. Now, there are different kinds of filters, but the one I'm showing you right now is the most common, and it's called a low-pass filter. I'm not going to show you them in this video, but on some other synths, there's also filters like high-pass, band-pass, and a few others, and all of them have their own unique sound. So, it sounds cool when I move the filter. But it can be a lot more practical to move it automatically with an envelope, just like we did with the volume. So we have the same attack, decay, sustain, and release features, which can fade the filter in or out, or give it a pluck sound whenever you hit a key. You want to make sure when you're setting your envelope for the filter to have the cutoff uh, downways a little, because it will usually not work. Uh, when you have it set to max. So you can hear there that uh, decay uh, envelope. Uh, let's try some attack. So there is one difference with the filter envelope, which is the envelope amount, and that basically sets how much the filter cutoff moves from its current position with the envelope. It's a bit different than 
controlling the volume because the filter cutoff can be either at a negative position like this or a positive position like this. So it can be at any point and go up and down from that position as opposed to volume which just starts at zero volume and goes to maximum volume. So uh, let's just show you the envelope function here. You see it's called EG. Uh, on some synths, it'll be called ENV for envelope amount or uh, AMT for amount. You can see as I add more envelope amount, it makes the sound sharper. And here we have uh, it set to a negative value, which basically moves the filter in the opposite direction. So remember, because we're using the envelopes, um, this is just like moving the knob ourselves, but it's doing it. It's doing it automatically for us. Now we've about covered all the major building blocks you'll need to make your basic sound on any synthesizer. There is one last major thing that will define your sound, and that's your LFOs. An LFO is similar to an envelope because it controls things like volume or the filter. But it's different in that it will continuously go up and down over and over instead of just happening once whenever you press a key. This can be useful to simulate things like vibrato or tremolo, but it also has a lot of creative ways to use it. So just as an example of what this sounds like, uh, I'm going to quickly dial up uh, vibrato and tremolo for you so you can hear. So there we would have an example of uh, using it for vibrato. Don't worry, I'll explain shortly uh, what I'm doing here. For now, I'm just giving you some examples. So let's try tremolo. So there you can see we have like a rather ch cheesy tremolo effect, but uh, I'm just using it as an example. So uh, to show you what I'm doing, uh, first I'm going to tell you about the two basic parts here, the source and the destination. Source controls the shape of the up and down movement, and destination says which knob it will be controlling. So to give you another example, I'll select the first source which is a saw, and send it to the filter. So I select saw, and down here we're sending to the filter. In order to hear the LFO, you also need to set the amount which controls how much of the LFO you will hear. So you can see as I increase the amount, the effect gets more and more dramatic. You can also control the speed of the LFO by using the LFO rate knob. Generally using dramatic settings are better for things like effects, where subtle settings like the vibrato I showed you earlier can be good for things like adding expression to your sound. So uh, lastly, let's listen to a couple of the different LFO shapes. It's not too important to know exactly uh, what the names of the shapes are because a lot of different synthesizers will have uh, different shapes that you can send with the LFO and usually it will give you a visual picture of the shape that it's sending.
So again, just keep in mind that uh, much like the envelope, all we're doing is controlling a knob on the uh, synthesizer, but it's just automatically doing it for you. And the difference is that with the LFO, it will continuously loop the pattern instead of only doing it once whenever you hit a key. So these are the basic building blocks to pretty much almost any synth you might come across. Different synths will have some kind of variation on how many oscillators there are, what kind of basic tones you can get, what filter types there are, and where they're all located. Some synths like my Moog will have the envelopes fixed to certain things like the filter or volume, but remember that they're basically just turning the knob for you, and lots of synths will let you pick what your envelope is affecting. You could affect things like the pitch, the resonance, even things like the LFO speed or amount. You'll have to look around on each synth, but everything I've covered here should be on them. So using that knowledge, uh, you can take what you know and start designing your own sounds on synthesizers.